Hello and welcome to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Jess and I ride all things two wheels. I have a 2009 Harley Davidson Dyna, a Royal Enfield Himalayan, a BMW R18B, and unfortunately, not a 2024 Road Glide. <gasps> until today. So if you don't know the backstory, this actually is not my motorcycle. Technically, I haven't signed the paperwork for it and I cannot do that until I get back home to Ohio. If you can't tell by the background, I'm in Florida. Long story short, I flew to Las Vegas, Nevada to do a press ride with Harley Davidson on this beautiful motorcycle. Unfortunately, the weather was looking very, very poor for the press ride out to Los Angeles from Las Vegas. A rare superstorm is about to drench California. Up to a foot of rain expected across areas from LA down to San Diego. I talked the motor company into letting me, instead of riding 500 miles, turn around and ride over 3,000 miles all the way back to Florida for my press ride. The ride was supposed to basically end for Daytona Bike Week. I was supposed to give the motorcycle back to the motor company during Bike Week and something happened. I told them no. Actually, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm a really nice person. I would never do that. But I did have a conversation with Harley Davidson and I said, listen, I know I'm supposed to give this motorcycle back to you, but I don't think I can. This bike has a lot of memories for me right now. The riding is amazing. The technology is a wonderful upgrade that I have personally been looking for in my motorcycle. So what can we do to make this work? And um, Harley offered me a deal that I couldn't refuse. Let me introduce you to my beautiful 2024 Harley Davidson Road Glide. Okay, well, since I'm not one of those like fancy YouTube talking head video people, I'm actually gonna hop on my motorcycle and go ride it and tell you what the heck we got going on with this beautiful 2024 Harley Davidson Road Glide. I wonder if I make a dollar every time I say 2024 Harley Davidson Road Glide. Um, before we go though, I noticed my front tire was a little bit low because the temperature swings here in Florida have been insane. If you guys were here for Daytona Bike Week, you probably saw me almost on my deathbed because it was so humid and today it's like nice and beautiful and getting chilly at night. So anyway, I actually have my Fantic X9 Pro tire inflator. Always carry this little guy with me. I genuinely have not had to use this since I was in Ohio and that battery is still full. I don't know if you can see it because of the LED and the flicker, but I haven't touched this thing and that battery has stayed completely full. So I do think my front tire is a little low at least it felt a little low while i was riding no big deal screw this little bad boy on and then oh yeah 27 psi i'm pretty sure this front tire is supposed to be 30 so ooh, not 40. easy peasy bump it down and let him cook um it's pretty quiet super easy usb-c charging point right there you can see exactly how quick it took woo <laughs> okay we are done. Easy, sneaking peasy. I always, 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 always have a tire inflator with me. Unfortunately, I didn't have this with me on my cross country road trip. I always carry this with me, especially like with my rain gear, just my roadside kit. But yeah, once you plug it back in right here, shuts off and saves battery super easy. If you guys want to check this out, I will have a link down in the description. They're constantly running some really cool sales. So definitely go check out the Fantic X9 Pro link down in the description now that that's all done right back in the saddlebags oh i gotta put my gloves and my jacket on all righty let's try this again all geared up got my mesh jacket on because even though it's getting chilly at night it gets hot in that sun during the day i'm actually really close to the blockhead garage so i think i'm gonna go over there and see what those guys are up to wait it's a it's supposed to be higher than 30 Oh no, <laughs> I think it's supposed to be 35. Get my little Fantic X9 Pro tire inflator back out and bump this bad boy up to 35. 12 seconds later. Done. Back on the road, baby. So I actually have a very, very hopeful surprise in this video. And it's not exactly the motorcycle, but I'm gonna talk more about the bike and what's going on because I'm gonna have to, but I am riding up to almost 
Daytona Beach because there is some unfinished business I have from last year. And I'm a couple days away from leaving Florida. So if you guys don't know, my husband and I have been snowboarding here in Florida since December. It's currently March 12th today. And um, we're about to head out and it's really actually making me sad. I can't wait to go home. I miss my house, but it's gonna, I'm really gonna miss my, uh, my friends down here. So anyway, I'm gonna stop over by the Blockhead Garage. If you guys don't know, Blockhead and I just did the cross country trip together with Harley Davidson. Uh, he filmed a series over on his channel and I just wanted to stop by before I head up to my next destination. So let's go check out the Blockhead Garage. Ooh, what a beautiful day. All right, we just got to the Blockhead Garage. Oh, is it lunchtime? <laughs> Literally mid bite. Yes. I can zoom. <laughs> <laughs> is it delicious or it'll make a turd? Mm, oh, it's pretty good. Chipotle. Chipotle. Yeah. Chipotle. Pretty um, consistently delicious. You gotta have the, um, what is it? The uh, Tabasco Chipotle flavored sauce. Not sponsored. And guac is extra. Oh my god, yeah. I'll always pay for the extra guac. Chipotle has the best yeah, guac. But you gotta do the guac. So, I stopped by Good Buddy Blockhead's garage because it's on the way to where I'm trying to go in this video. Hopefully we can get there safely this time. But wanted to try to talk to Block and see his thoughts and opinions since he actually just did this cross-country motorcycle trip with me, but he did it on the 2024 CVOST Road Glide. All right, 3,000 miles later, when you've been riding it since we've been back to Florida because we were, tentatively, I was supposed to give the bike back in Daytona, but <laughs> we're just kind of- I think I was too. I know. <laughs> We just keep telling them no. I told them I wasn't done with it, which I'm not. No, no, we gotta get- There's more stuff that I wanna do. Gotta go do full review, some break in service stuff. We already did that. But your total thoughts on, you know, the bike and what it is. So per personally, I know you haven't owned a Rogue Glide in the past, but for me, it is it feels like such a substantial upgrade. And that's why I'm making this video right now. But just from the thoughts of somebody who's never owned a touring bike, w just give us your overall thoughts and opinions. Well, I'm super spoiled now, <clears throat> having ridden that thing 3,000 miles. Once uh, you go bagger, you can't go back. <laughs> dude, getting, getting back on my Softail, on my uh, Softail Lowrider S Goldzilla, it just feels so small. I mean, it's which is awesome because it feels like comfortable and nimble and all that stuff. But yeah, going from the Road Glide, um, was planning on adding one to the Arsenal, and uh, after that ride, will be adding one to the Arsenal. Um, details to come. Stay tuned. I think with the the way that the CVO Road Glide ST is done up, it honestly feels like riding a smaller bike because I've ridden previous Road Glides, you know, like the 23s and uh, even the standard like 24. It honestly feels like riding uh, a soft tail, which is kind of crazy to say. I was just, I was just overall very, very impressed. So I obviously rode like the base model touring edition across the country and you rode obviously the sporty setup, tighter controls, bigger motor, all of that. Do you think, like, I think you've mentioned it in your video, but obviously even if you had the ST model, it's still like, it's still a beautiful, comfortable, very rideable motorcycle compared to like just the base model. And you, you did just fine. All you did was add some passenger pegs and you did just fine crossing the country, even on the super suspension, bigger motor, all that stuff. The suspension was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> as you can attest to the roads in Louisiana, mm. they got gnarly. Um, some of the, basically like where the road meets the bridges in like some of those areas, like some of those bumps are really, really bad. Throw you out of your seat type, type stuff. And uh, compressed the hell out of the suspension, never bottomed it out. Like that, the suspension was amazing. The only other thing that I would probably change for something like 3000 miles doing that distance is the windshield. And it's one of those things that I've talked to a couple of people about. They're like, oh, that windshield is really small. It is really small. I'm but actually gonna, I'm flipping this around because I did, I was trying to get a Clockworks windshield on the bike and bike week. And unfortunately it was just like my schedule didn't work out to get the bike over there, but love their products, check them out. I'll actually have a link down in the description. They are already making products for the new 24 Harley Davidson. So I actually had my friend Matt from Harley sent me over their 10 inch windscreen. I've been riding with that for a little over 200 miles now, and it is an absolute game changer. I can ride with my visor open. I don't get the buffeting. So 
100% recommend upgrading the windscreen immediately because that was one of my biggest issues too on the ride. What does that say? I heart block. That's so disrespectful. <laughs> That's oh my God. They rode over there too on the saddlebag, but I was saying, yeah, in the pollen. Are you recording this? Yeah. I don't have to keep it, but. Feel free to keep it. <clears throat> I said in my video, um, whenever I saw that, um, if somebody's bike is dirty and you ride on their stuff, it scratches the paint. It fucks the paint. It's not my bike. Yeah. So I, I'm not super pissed off, but Harley Davidson is going to sell this motorcycle to somebody. If it was my bike, I'd be fucking furious. Yes. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. PSA, <laughs> do not. Do, if it's not yours, don't fucking touch it. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, this is his CVOST that he rode across the country. Well, it's not his. He's got to give it back. But this is the exact bike that he rode across the country. So it has bugs and guts on it from El Paso to here. That's what I, when I filmed my review video, which by the way, guys, full review video on my channel as well. I left all the water spots, all the bugs, all of the scuffs and everything because the bike has been ridden. This wasn't just a couple hundred mile review. Yeah, this is, I mean, Filthy. Yeah. But yeah, so the differences on this motorcycle, obviously the significantly larger motor, you got that bigger intake, you got bigger rotors, uh, different foot pegs, piggyback suspension here, fully adjustable solo seat, and then you have the little risers with tinier T-bars. Do you have a uh, track mode on I don't think so. Yeah, track mode too. And track mode. So the, the biggest difference is, is this bike is built to perform without having to build a performance bagger, which is what they do here at the Blockhead Garage. So if you guys ever check it out, um, so you can get your service here. You can get motorcycles built. That guy working on the tiny little Grom, the performance <laughs> Grom. Oh, I can zoom in. I forgot. <laughs> big boar grom bb <laughs> but yeah so they build you know all different kinds of motorcycles primarily harley davidson so give them a check out but anyway this uh this bike is obviously amazing but i think i like the my like my standard touring version of it that's what i'm going for so yeah amazing or standard touring version standard touring yeah. just because <clears throat> like if you buy a cvo like it's it's done you know yeah no this is i wouldn't do anything else except literally add the foot pegs like you do yeah. <laughs> so like something like this is you know for the buyer that wants to buy it and not have to take it to a shop for customization we have a shop that we build custom bikes so um yeah we, yeah. <laughs> we definitely could definitely customize um, it if if i were to buy a cvo and then customize it i'm That'd be, it'd be overkill, and that's exactly what I'd name it. Overkill? Uh, so, yeah. I love that. <laughs> uh, Mine would be roadkill. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to start with a, uh, a standard or a base version and, uh, and build up from there. It's like we have customers that will bring their bikes or want to do a build with us, and they'll say like, hey, I want to build it into this. What should I start with? And we're like, get the bare bones mm -hmm. bottom line because we're going to take everything off of it anyways. Yep. So that's exactly what we're going to do to ours. Cool. Incoming. Incoming. We haven't talked about it yet. No. <laughs> Go subscribe to his channel to figure out what the hell he's talking about. But yeah, beautiful bike. That's the one he rode. It is gorgeous. Uh, even prettier in person. I love the white and red in uh, renditions of this, but I think I'm a little partial to the one sitting out in the parking lot right now. So The white that they did is... I walked, so the white on my motorcycle is the whitest bike I've ever seen. I Seriously. walked outside from my campground today and the sun was hitting it. And I was like, <laughs> like I turned so into ash. Crispy white. It is sparkly, sparkly white. So, all righty, see you later, bud. Thank you for the uh, quick little interview. Go give these guys a follow on Instagram, all the things. And Don't ride on people's motorcycles. Do not ride on a dirty bike. Don't touch another person's bike. All right, definitely good group of guys in there. I had a wonderful time crossing the country with Blockhead and his girlfriend Amanda. I had a great time doing an iron butt and overall I've just been having an amazing time on this motorcycle hence why I'm not giving it back. So I guess let's talk a little bit more about what we agreed to do. Also as I mentioned I'm leaving Florida here next week so I don't get up to this area very often so we're gonna go have lunch at Swamp House Grill. Um, side note, <laughs> these are broken and I, I actually figured out why. Everyone thought it was just because Harley was making faulty things, 
This bike was a press motorcycle. So if you guys follow any other YouTubers that went to the press launch of the 2024, road glide, street glide, stuff like that, you'll know that other people have ridden this bike. So almost every single mile on this motorcycle is mine, give or take a couple hundred. These pockets are different from the previous generation road glides. Those pockets you just lift up. These ones actually latch. And uh, so a few people were on this bike before me and they ripped these latches up. So unfortunately, the, the bike that I'm keeping has <laughs> broken latches. But easy fix, I'll get some new little latches and we'll fix that right up. And there's a couple other modifications I'm gonna be doing. But the main reason I'm making this video right now is because I didn't wanna have to answer 50,000 questions when people noticed that I started riding this motorcycle back up to Ohio. So yes, this is my motorcycle. I am riding it back to Ohio with me and uh, you'll see this bike at the Forgotten Angels camp out this weekend. You'll see this bike on the channel in future videos. And we're going to address the elephant in the room later in the video, which is my current 2018 Harley Davidson Road Glide. I wanna go ahead and be honest with you guys. I had no intention on buying this motorcycle, truly. I was excited to go do the press ride with Harley Davidson. But if you remember previously, I believe last November, I filmed this video right here where I talked about my hangups with my personal motorcycle. And if you remember this clip, it actually test ride the brand new Harley Davidson CBO Road Glide by that motorcycle. I, I truly enjoyed the way it felt. I enjoyed how light it was. It actually felt significantly lighter than this bike that I'm on. I knew this day was coming. I knew the technology was coming to this motorcycle and I knew that I was gonna wanna upgrade. Did I know it was gonna happen as fast as it did? Absolutely not. I did not have any NDA. I did not have any information that this motorcycle was coming when I filmed that video. That was just honestly how I was feeling about the bike and the tech and the way I was riding compared to what I knew was coming down the pipeline. So in other words, I just, I knew this was gonna be the next best thing for me. This motorcycle handles night and day different compared to my 2018 Road Glide. The technology in it is absolutely fantastic and I am going to be working on a few ways to reroute some of the tech that is a bit tedious and is a headache. But in other words, it's just 10,000% a better upgrade when it comes to the motorcycle compared to the previous generations. So one thing I do, I had to open my visor, it was getting warm, but this windshield, hopefully, and I can shut this, hopefully you don't get too much buffeting. Actually, I think that made it worse. So let's open that back up. After talking with Harley, we just, we worked out an amazing deal and I'm taking her home. This is a girl, <laughs> it's a girl bike. Appa is a boy and she is a beautiful, beautiful girl. If you have any name recommendations, please leave a comment down below. I have not named her yet because I want her to be perfect and I just want everything to go smoothly. So if you have any recommendations, drop it down below. Yeah, I just, I, I knew as soon as I hopped on this motorcycle, I didn't even have to do the press ride. If you guys saw this video right here, you'll know that we went to Seminole Harley Davidson here in Central Florida. And I, I've already previously test ridden this motorcycle quite a few times and she's perfect. I will be addressing some of the upgrades. We are going to be installing heated grips hopefully here soon because before I ride this bike back to Ohio, it is still winter, it is going to be cold and I'm gonna to need to do everything in my power to make sure I'm comfortable. We are going to be installing some new speakers or some of the audio features in the future, not right now. That's not super important to me currently. I just kind of want to get the bike back home, get her safe and settled in. For right now, I am starving. I'm really thirsty, so I'm going to stop talking. Let's go grab some lunch at Swamp House Grill. Ooh, Swamp House Grill. I'm the only bike here. It's way too nice today. I think I'm going to head outside to the patio right on the river.
delicious lunch. Unfortunately, I couldn't really film there because they were just blasting music that would have gotten me demonetized instantly. So I'm gonna hop back on the motorcycle, take you to a very special place. Hopefully we actually get there this time. Look at her. <laughs> All right, so if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you might remember where I'm going and why I am trying to get there. And based on the time of day, I am once again choosing to do this. I don't know how it's gonna go. Literally, the kiddos are getting out of school and I'm nervous they're gonna do what they made me do last time. And I don't wanna do that, so. One like equals one prayer. If you guys are enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Leave a comment down below on what you think I should name my motorcycle. And hopefully we can get into the next section of the video. Please, God, please. Says I got a half a mile until I turn left. And I really hope I get to just turn left directly into the Blue Springs State Park. If you guys don't know, the springs here in Florida are the same temperature year round. So in the summertime, they're nice and cool. And in the wintertime, they're nice and warm because they stay the same um, ambient temperature. So in the winter months, the manatees leave the coastal regions and they head over into the springs. I want to see a manatee. That's all I want. But last year, oh, thank God. I don't know if you can see the dirt road in front of me. That's all sand. Last year, I had to drive all the way down to the end of that dirt road and I got stuck in the sand and my bike overheated. Ah, fuck, 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 fuck. No. Oh, fuck. God damn it. This is all sand. Traction control. I'm gonna give you a push, all right? All right. Thank you. Yeah. I think. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> oh, this is lovely. There's no line. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm gonna cry. Sorry, let me turn that off for you. It's four dollars. Four whole dollars. I think I got that for you. There's only four manatees in there today. Someone said a little while ago, maybe a few hours ago, they saw about 12. Oh, so okay. They kind of come and go. You know what? I'll take my chances. I came down here last year and it was so busy. I was on my motorcycle and I got stuck in the sand uh, yeah. and my bike overheated. So I had to leave and I never got to see them. So this is like my bucket list item okay. today. Hopefully there's a few down there for you to see. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Have a good day. You as well. Thank you. I don't care if there is one manatee. As long as I see a manatee today, I'm going to be so happy. So I don't know if you guys know, my other motorcycle, Appa, he is based on the character from Appa from Avatar The Last Airbender. And he is, he's a cartoon character, guys. So take it or leave it. But he is cross-contaminated with a, a flying bison and a manatee so that's why he has that big long floppy tail i have never ever ever been to one of the florida springs before um this is my very first time i'm so excited so i'm rambling because i'm nervous so i'm gonna go ahead and shut the fuck up and we're gonna go park <laughs> okay i actually brought my nice camera with me just in the hopes we actually see somebody oh <laughs> see some really cool wildlife. I don't have a telephoto lens, so I'm gonna have to do with what I can, but. Have you guys seen any? Uh, he saw some manatees earlier. They love that fish. So while I look for these manatees, I'm gonna kind of talk to you guys about my thoughts, opinions, and my plans for this motorcycle, because as I mentioned, I'm not gonna keep two of the exact same motorcycles and I'm gonna take this one home with me. By the time I get it home, it's gonna have a little over 5,000 miles, so there are some things I want to work on. Obviously, maintenance is a huge one for me. Um, I have taken Oppo, Oppa to Faro Harley-Davidson for every single service, except for like one product install at the Blockhead Garage. So maintaining these bikes are super important to me and I just wanna make sure they're taken care of. Such an incredible experience to not only like get to test ride this new bike, so obviously I feel connected to the motorcycle in that sense and I feel connected to the launch of the motorcycle, but the actual bike that wasn't even mine, 
but they handpicked for me based on my riding style, the color, um, other things. Like I didn't pick out this motorcycle. <laughs> it was gifted to me for the press ride and I said, this is mine, I'm taking it home. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Still no manatees, but the hunt continues. So, if you guys aren't familiar with my channel, I like to build relationships with my motorcycles. Every single motorcycle I own has a name, has a personality, and I truly have a personal relationship and a connection with the bike that I'm riding at that time. So, starting all over with a brand new motorcycle that has no real modifications, no real personality other than the personality that I put into it is honestly daunting. I've done so much work with Appa. I've taken so many trips with Appa and I have so many memories with Appa, but I know that his time with me is probably coming to an end soon. Um, and I'm just really excited to see what the future holds with this new beautiful girl. <laughs> I feel like I'm adopting like a dog and it's an inanimate object. Trust me, I know it sounds insane, but it's just what I love. I don't know what I'm going to do if I don't see any manatees. found the manatee and he's just a little thing so cute okay that was worth it I got to see one little baby manatee I did feel kind of bad about their little tags that they have to you know wander around the springs with but I will take what I can get so honestly at first I, I just really didn't know if this bike was gonna have enough to offer to really make me want to upgrade because I still ride a beautiful Milwaukee 8. It's a 107 cubic inch and the power really in my 18 road glide didn't feel like I was lacking. But now that I have this new 117 motor, I mean, this is completely stock. I do enjoy having ride modes. Um, I'm having it in sport mode the past couple days and I have noticed a little bit of a difference in my fuel economy. So I might switch back over to road mode just to save myself a couple bucks in the long run. But at the end of the day, what's a couple bucks worth of gas compared to just uh, having fun with a lot of torque? Blue Spring State Park was beautiful. I do wish I had more time. I kind of wish I came uh, with more manatees, but you don't really know until the day of. They can kind of advertise it online, but it is what it is. It was still a beautiful state park. I kind of wish we could have gotten into a kayak or something and really enjoyed the spring, but it seems like they're gonna be under a lot of construction in the next coming years. So I'm just happy I did it today. Again, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think I should name this motorcycle. Um, I love having your input and it really makes it easier to wrap my head around all of the different options and sometimes things I never even think of. Thank you so much for everything that you do for myself, um, the channel, just being here with me, enjoying the ride, because without you, these opportunities would genuinely never come to me. I would never get to experience new motorcycles the way I get to experience them. And I wouldn't have amazing relationships with you guys, the viewer, uh, manufacturers like Harley Davidson. And it's been an absolute honor to get to know you guys watching and the people in the industry who make these amazing machines. So obviously, thank you guys so much for watching. And until my next video, you'll be good and I'll see you later.